Space Invader. Without ZFS, we'll be defenseless when the bit drop returns. Sometime in the future, ZFS will be available on our range. Until then, we can use true mass. Don't move! Hey! Billy. Have a gun! Please understand. True mass are our friends. Threat? Father. They're monsters! Billy, I'll explain everything. We can install it on Unraid as a VM. With them? Look at me. Look at me. I am your friend. No, Father. Billy, look at me! Please, put the gun down. No! Billy, no! <laughs> Hurry! The wall is closing! Here is your mission now. Install Trunas as a VM on our raid. I, I, I will do as you command, but please hurry! The operating system not important, only function important. Hi there guys, well ZFS, or as you Americans say ZFS, is definitely one of my favourite file systems. And also The Fifth Element is one of my favourite movies too. So that's why you had that strange intro introducing the video that way. And also to try and make a point that yeah I love Unraid, and now I'm not being disloyal to it by talking about Trunas. Because we can have the best of both worlds by having them both in the same server. Unraid has an awesome hypervisor, and so why not virtualize FreeNAS if you want to use ZFS? And yes, in fact, there is actually a ZFS plugin for Unraid, and I'll be making a video about that sometime in the future. But using the ZFS plugin involves a lot of command line work, which many people probably don't want to do. But TrueNAS, or as it used to previously be known before its name change, FreeNAS, Everything's controlled through a web UI, so it's pretty straightforward to use. And despite what the website Windows Central has to say, it isn't a platform built on top of Linux, it's actually built on top of FreeBSD. Well, we can forgive them for thinking that, because they probably think if it's not on Windows or Mac, every other operating system's just Linux. Now, in case anyone's worrying, installing a TrueNAS VM, it won't affect the array or any of the pools on your Unraid server. So it's kind of going to be a bit like having a second array on the server with separate disks. And in fact, if you map the ZFS array to your Unraid server, then Unraid can use it for anything you want it to be used for. So for example, you could store your Unraid VM images on a ZFS array. So then, just what is ZFS or ZFS? Well, ZFS has been around for about 20 years, starting life in 2001, being part of the Sun Microsystems Solaris operating system and it did actually start its life open source. Published under an open source license as Open Solaris until the Oracle Corporation acquiring Sun in 2009 when the license was changed to closed source. But in the years leading up to Oracle's acquisition of Sun, the open source version of ZFS was ported across to Linux, Mac OS and FreeBSD. And then in 2013, OpenZFS was founded to continue the development of the open source part of ZFS. Okay, so that's a little bit of history, but what does the ZFS actually stand for? Well, obviously FS stands for file system, so what about the Z or Z? What does that stand for? Well, originally, ZFS was called Zeta file system. So what is Zeta? Zeta is a prefix used with the metric system, representing 10 to the power of 21, or a sextillion. So basically, a really, really big number. And just to go off topic, but it's quite interesting, I think. In fact, the biggest banknote ever printed was a note for one sextillion pengo. And that was printed in Hungary in 1946. So, yep, ZFS doesn't have anything to do with banknotes. The really big number zeta in ZFS is to indicate the storage capacity in the order of 10 to the power of 21 bits. ZFS having a maximum of 256 quadrillion zeta bytes of storage and a maximum file size of 16 extra bytes in file size. 
Now, ZFS is a really advanced file system, and as such, it has some really interesting features, such as data integrity, verification, and automatic repair. So whenever new data is written to ZFS, it makes a checksum for that data, and then when the data is read back, it verifies that checksum, and if it doesn't match, the file system knows there's an error, and then will attempt to repair it. Now, another good feature is something called snapshots. Snapshots are used to track changes in the file system. So the snapshot, that contains the original version of the file system. Then the live file system, this contains any changes since that last snapshot was taken. Because of this, it doesn't use up any extra space, as new data is only written to the live file system, and new blocks are allocated to store this data. So snapshots can be used to recover a past version of a file that you might have changed, or you can even roll back the whole live file system to a previous snapshot. Now, ZFS isn't the only file system that does this. This is also a feature in ButterFS as well. You can have snapshots in that. And also both ZFS and ButterFS support something called copy on write. So what this does is when you write new data, the file system writes it to a different block. And when the write's finished, the metadata is then updated to point to the data on the new block. So what this does, if anything should go wrong while the data is being written, such as a system crash or something, then the original data is still preserved and it isn't lost. And CFS, it also benefits from pooled storage. So let's take a look at that now. So right at the top of the hierarchy is something called a Z pool. And the Z pool is made up of a series of drives. And because ZFS combines the features of both a file system and a volume manager, it can make a file system that spans across these series of drives making up the pool. But these drives don't actually directly make up the pool. The drives are actually part of something called a VDEV. And a VDEV is made up of one or more actual disks. And VDEV is an abbreviation which is short for virtual device. And the disks inside a VDEV, their storage topologies can be just a single disk, a mirror, various different RAID levels, such as RAID Z1, RAID Z2, and RAID Z3. The 1, 2, and 3 signifying how many disks in a VDEV can be lost without losing data. So a Z pool is made of one or more VDEVs. So if you need to increase the storage capacity of a pool, you have to add it by adding another VDEV. What you can't do, unfortunately, is you can't add another disk to a VDEV. So this is very different to what we're used to on Unraid. Hang on, guys, I'm just getting a message in. Library computer, data being received. Well, it looks like one of the biggest features that ZFS users have wanted for years is going to be a thing soon. And it will be a thing that we can expand a RAID C VDEV with an extra disk. But right now, as of making this video, this isn't possible at the moment. So to expand the pool, we have to add another VDEV. Now, yes, you can just add a single disk VDEV to the pool. But the problem with this is that VDEV won't have any redundancy. So in order to have redundancy, if a drive fails, then you're going to have to add a VDEV with at least two disks. Now, it's really important to remember that ZFS's redundancy is at the VDEV level and not at the pool level. So if you were to lose a VDEV in a ZFS pool, then that entire pool of which that VDEV is a member of, that would be lost as well. So it's important to make sure that each of the VDEVs that make up the pool, each one has good redundancy. OK, then, so that's the basic structure of the pool. But whereabouts is the actual user data stored? Well, for that, we use something called data sets. And there's two main types of data set. One, a file system data set, and the other one, a volume data set. Yeah, and so as the name gives it away a little bit, the file system data set is for file storage, and a volume data set is used for block storage. So that's for things like iSCSI. OK, so that's just a basic simplified look at the structure of the ZFS file system. Now, originally, this video was just one long video. But sadly, when I uploaded it earlier, YouTube told me that the video would be demonetized because of my lovely intro. Really, it should be fine under fair use policy, but YouTube's pretty strict, so I decided to cut the video into two and leave the intro. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this first part and you carry on watching the second part. If you did enjoy it, then please hit the like button and I'll catch you in the next video in a moment.